All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a special dinner version of the drive-thru. Hungry? Stop by the deli and get yourself a potato bar. Brought to you by Mr. Tilton. Okay, so welcome to Chapter 3. Y'all are all growing up so fast. We are already moving on into Chapter 3. The proofs are going to start becoming more enjoyable and more challenging. That's what we're in this for. So, we're going to talk in this chapter all about congruency, and we're going to start with congruent figures. So what does it mean for two things to be similar? Um, like if I held my hand up to my son Marley's hand, we would, my son's hand would be very similar to mine. Here's going to be my artwork. This would be great. Oh gosh, what is that? Oh gosh, it's supposed to be hands. So there would be my hand, and then maybe here would be little Marley's hand. His little fat fingers. Okay, so our hands are similar. All of our hands are, are similar. Um, so similar in mass really means the same shape. Okay, now what does it mean to be equal? Okay, well equal means that something has the exact same magnitude as something else, okay? The same magnitude. So if you can think about it like this, that square and that rectangle, they have equal areas, okay? They have equal areas. They both have areas of 16. So similar means same shape. Equal means the same size. Size is another word for magnitude, right? Um, and so what does it mean to be congruent? It means same shape. And same size. So for almost all of us, our hands are congruent. If you held your left hand up to your right hand, they would be the exact same shape and the exact same size. And that means our hands are congruent to each other. My hand is similar to maybe your hand. Same shape, different size. OK, let's move on. So let's take a look at this, um, this triangle. Let's call it K-I-T-E. OK, so let's say that triangle kit has been reflected about the line KT, and we've, con we've created triangle ket, okay? Triangle kite and triangle ket, okay? In order for these polygons to be congruent to each other, then all pairs of their corresponding parts, so every angle from this triangle needs to be congruent to every angle from that triangle, and every side from that triangle needs to be congruent to every corresponding side from that triangle. What the heck does all that mean? Well, it means the parts that match up will be congruent to each other. Okay? So if we wanted to write a congruency statement for this, we would write triangle. Now, I can write this, this triangle on the left in any order I want any order I want. So I went with KTI. If this triangle is congruent now, what's important now is the order on the right now matters. So what angle is angle K on the left congruent to? Angle K on the right. So I'd have to start with a K. What angle is angle T on the left equal to? Angle T on the right. And then finally, angle I is congruent to angle E. Now let's keep looking. Is segment KT, is that congruent to segment KT? Yes, it does. It does look like it's congruent. Okay? Segment TI, is that congruent to segment TE? Since it's a reflection, then yes, indeed it is. And then segment KI, is that congruent to segment KE? Yes, it is. So this is one of the most important parts of this simple little lesson. Order matters. Okay? It matters. You've got to write the corresponding parts in the same order for each set of congruent parts. 
Okay, this is our reflexive postulate. Now, if you were if you're watching this, you're probably pretty smart because you're a good student and you're in accelerated geometry here at Sycamore. So if you remember, what the heck's a postulate? Well, a postulate is a geometric statement that cannot be proven true, but we assume it to be true because we can't prove it. Remember, theorems can be proven true. Postulates can't. So we are going to, from here on, accept true that all segments and angles are congruent to themselves, and that's called the reflexive postulate. So here's the last thing to think about. If I did have triangle cat congruent to triangle dog, how many pairs of congruent things would I have to prove congruent in order to prove this? Well, I'd have to say that angle C is congruent to angle D and angle a is congruent to angle O, and angle T is congruent to angle G. I'd also have to say that CA, segment CA, is congruent to segment DO, that segment CT is congruent to segment DG, and that segment AT is congruent to segment OG. I would have to prove six sets of things congruent in order to prove those triangles congruent. I believe that is all. That is all. But